Hey there, welcome to Guy Talks About Movies While Working on His Emotional Issues. Today we're talking about Lady and the Tramp and ranking it into the canon. Right off the bat, I love this opening song. It gives me the warm tingles. Always has ever since I was a kid. Settle down Trent, you must be fair and balanced like Fox News. We slowly pan into a family opening presents at Christmas time, and we realize that that dog is already being abused. I mean, who puts a dog in a box? But remember, just for tonight. Famous last words of parents and pet owners. A year later, Sunday? You mean you're not going to church? I have no frame of reference for this. It's not computing to my judgmental mind. We meet Tramp. He escapes a dog catcher and ends up on Snob Hill. Cut back to Lady. She's sad all of a sudden. Tramp overhears her talking and uses fear to make her react. He's like a prototype SJW or a prototype Trump. Pick your poison. I hate Aunt Sarah from the moment I hear her nagging voice on the phone. And I really hate her when she yells at the dog. And the baby cries because she yells at the dog. Also, the baby was just asleep, I'm pretty sure. And Aunt Sarah flounces up the stairs with the intention of waking this little child. Auntie Insufferable takes the dog in for a muzzle and Lady runs away. Tramp sees her and rescues her. And then he takes her to a zoo that has no people in it. Tramp is the Barney Stinson of this world, and he and Lady clearly have a one-night stand. This should make you feel uncomfortable. And for those of you who are not squirming, I'm judging you. Tramp is irresponsible. He almost gets Lady killed and definitely gets her captured by the dog catcher. It's almost comical how much this scene makes me hurt inside. Miserable being must find more miserable being. Sounds like Tumblr to me. We hear the song, He's a Tramp, and I have to wonder, why did the media do so much fetishizing of men who sleep around? Even Disney shows it, and so did I Love Lucy. I mean, tramp when it's used for a woman means slut, but tramp when it's used for a man means scoundrel. Do you hear the difference too? I'm not sure if this is a product of society at large, or it's a twisted view of some sort of morality, or it's a product of competition between women. Probably a mixture of all three of those things, and I hate it. Oh, pigeon. Oh, pi oh. <laughs> oh, hi, boys. <laughs> Lady screams and Tramp comes running to save her from a huge rat. And this rat does look evil, but realistically, when have you ever seen a rat maliciously attack a baby? I don't like Aunt Sarah, but I have to give her credit where credit is due. The dogs did more damage to this baby by knocking over its crib than that rat would have done. But I'm still squarely on the side of the dogs, which means when Aunt Sarah yells, I want to shove one of Miss Minnie's pies in that annoying hole in her face. It's nice that the dogs want to help, but almost everything the dogs do is unnecessary. The humans can do them faster and much safer. Speaking of which, Trusty is dead. That whiplash though. Disney, this isn't the way genetics work. In the end, Tramp has been successfully tamed by a good woman. Before we get to the smacked rating, yes, that's what I call it, please smack that like button and destroy that subscribe button. I want you, yes, you specifically, to be my next nine subscribers before I reach 100. Come on, press the button. You know you want to. This is the night. This storyline keeps its audience engaged by withholding information. For instance, the scene where Lady is sad is a great way to raise the stakes without having to put a huge amount on the line for it. So we wonder what happened to make her think that she has done something wrong and that her owners don't love her anymore. This is particularly effective because we as humans understand that Jim Deere and Darling are going to have a baby 
through film shorthand. And that's another thing that this movie does wonderfully. It uses film shorthand very effectively. In this case, when Jim Deere comes home and says something to the effect of, Dear, are you doing okay? I was so worried to leave you all day. Or when we see Darling knitting, we realize that these things signal a baby. We don't see a baby bump, and we never hear them say the word pregnant, but it's clear to us in ways that aren't clear to youngsters that Darling is having a baby. I give this story second place out of 15 films so far. Bella Notte at the beginning is a really slow way to start the movie, but it is a very pretty song. The background music is wonderful as usual. The thing that really strikes me about these songs is that they always move the story forward. What is a Baby is my favorite song, and it's almost not even a song. It's kind of speak singing. As she feels more neglected, her emotions grow, and as her emotions grow, the pitch also gets higher. This is the Night is also a great example of this. It starts with someone literally singing and playing an instrument, so at that point, it is diegetic, and it changes to a figurative choir singing for the enjoyment of the viewer while Lady and Tramp do the dirty. Oh, that's right. This is the night. You'll never look at that song the same again. Also, this scene feels very reminiscent of the opening scene of Psycho. I give this music second place out of 15. This music is used very well and interestingly. Disney seemed to have really gotten their act together in the 1960s, and they should be rewarded for it. Because my ranking definitely rewards them. This is the night. The Victorian wealthy area is distinctively designed differently from the low wealth or industrial areas of town. The leaves on the trees are almost made out of pointillistic dots. The colors are soft and pastel and have very, very strong contrast. The carpets and grass look soft enough to reach out and touch. The houses are also beautiful, well situated, and the ratio of the film makes this look even nicer. This was the first animated feature to have been filmed in widescreen, and it does a lot to make this movie look even better. Through this animation though, the poorer areas of town are shown to be sharper, more difficult to navigate, and have darker, more saturated colors. This animation shows us the world that Tramp has grown in, in contrast to Lady's world. Lady's world is comfy, cozy, and has strict roles, along with a strict code of conduct. Tramp's world is not black and white at all, and has no prescribed way to act. The most important thing to him is to survive, while Lady is mostly focused on comfort. This clearly also has to do with character, so we'll stop right now. The other aspect of this animation is perspective. We see everything from a dog's perspective. From the very moment we start the movie, we zoom into the dog's level, and from then on, it's nothing but human legs. Or at least mostly nothing but human legs. Rarely we do see a face, and yet it definitely highlights the canine perspective. This animation amazingly tells us the most about the characters and the worlds that they come from. I give this animation second place out of 15 movies. This is the night. I already discussed character a little bit by accident. Disney, you sneaky genius, you. On the surface, it looks really simple, and I barely wrote any notes for it, but as I continue thinking, we see info about character all the time in this movie. However, this movie really focuses in on our two main characters. The humans and the rest of our four-legged friends are much less developed. Even then, though, they still have a little bit of development. They also are both heathens. They don't go to church on Sundays, and I am not here for it. However, Tramp has been clearly left by humans in the past, and he compensates for this by just not getting attached again. He goes from house to house or from girl to girl. He doesn't want to be hurt again, and in this way, he tries to act particularly tough. Lady, on the other hand, has no idea of life outside of her little fence. She's been protected and sheltered for her entire life. I think probably most people can relate to at least one of these characters, if not both. I give this movie fourth place out of 15 for character development. Once again, there's very little in the way of multiplane developments. However, Lady and the Tramp was the first animated movie to be filmed in Cinemascope, as I said earlier. Because of the pioneering of widescreen technology, I'm going to give this movie sixth place out of 15 
for technology. This is the night. I was pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed watching Lady and the Tramp. In my head, this is a very simple movie that I didn't really love that much. But as an analytical adult, there's a lot in this movie to chew on, especially in the animation. It definitely deserves the accolades that it gets. But I'm still not over the canine fornication or the main character's ability to sleep on Sundays. Like I said before, I can judge anything. I give Lady and the Tramp third place out of the 15 Disney movies I have reviewed so far. Thank you so much for joining and supporting the channel. Before you go, I need your help. Smash that like button and make sure to leave a comment so that I can inflate my numbers on YouTube's algorithms. Also, if you know anyone who loves Disney movies, make sure that you share this with them. There's something fun about being a part of a community as it first gets started. Make sure your maniacal Disney-loving friends have the opportunity to know about this channel before I get my hordes of adoring fans, concerts, movie deals, you know, all the big time stuff that's clearly coming for me. Thank you for joining and I'll see you again next week on Tuesday at 8 o'clock.